Hi, today I'm going to teach you three different methods to calculate the torque. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first, you're going to consider this force F, and the force F is acting a certain distance from the pivot. And the pivot here is down at the end where the hinge is, and the force F is being applied near the end near the end of this bar. All right, the first thing to remember is our definition of the torque. Torque is a vector quantity, and the value of that vector is R cross F. This is a cross product. If you're just interested in the magnitude of that vector, how big is the resulting vector, you simply have to do the magnitude of the vector R, the magnitude of the vector F. However, there's another term here. It's multiplied by sine of the angle theta. And the angle theta is defined in here. It's the angle between both vectors. And if you want to see that, remember vectors, you can move them around. So what you can do is put the vector R here and put the vector F at that same angle. So this here is the angle theta. That goes into the definition. Now the other thing you have to remember, it's a vector, so there has to be a direction associated to that. But for these simple cases where all the vectors are in the plane of the paper here, um, the direction is typically listed like this. So what you do is you simply look at the force. If this is the only force acting on the system, it would tend to make it rotate in the counterclockwise direction. And counterclockwise, we call this direction positive direction for torque. If there's another force acting on the system, F2, if F2 is the only force acting on the system, it would tend to make it rotate in the clockwise direction. Uh, clockwise direction is typically what we call the negative torque and that's simply a convention to remind us that the torque is actually a vector and the vector is actually pointing out of the page or into the page uh, but you can use this coordinate system here for torque and that's fine you could solve most of the problems that you're gonna see in any algebra based physics class or high school class okay so that's the direction this is the magnitude now let's look at the three different ways to calculate the torque let's take a numerical example let's take a force of 20 newtons let's take a distance to the pivot of three meters and angle of 30 degrees. Uh, method one is just the direct method. You simply apply our formula. R is three meters. The force is 20 newtons. Sine of the angle between them is 30 degrees. That's it. You get 60. Sine of 30 is a half. So at the end I get 30 newton meters. Now again, this force F, if it's the only force acting on the system, it tends to make it rotate in the clockwise direction. Clockwise direction is what we call the positive direction for torque. So that's the torque due to this force. A lot of times I'll actually even enter that in bracket clock, counterclockwise just to remind myself. So pretty straightforward for method one, just the direct application. All right, method two is also pretty straightforward. Remember, anytime I have uh, vector F, I can break that down into components. I can call this a component that's call it perpendicular or actually let's call it parallel. There's a component that's parallel to the vector R and there's also a component of that force F that is perpendicular to the vector R. And Now if you want to go back and calculate the torque the total torque due to F is simply going to be the torque due to the parallel component plus the torque due to the perpendicular component of that force. All right, let's look at those magnitudes here. The perpendicular component of the force is 1. It's going to be F sine of 30 degrees. The parallel component of that force is going to be the magnitude F cos of 30 degrees. All right, now we have two terms, and for each one of these terms, I can apply my equation for torque. So let's do the first one here. The torque due to the parallel component of the force is what? Well, it's the distance to the pivot. It's 3. It's the magnitude of the force. We just calculated that. It was F cos of 30 degrees multiplied by sine of the angle theta. What is the angle theta now between the vector r and the vector, or this component, 
of the vector f. We gotta be a little bit careful, but here it's sine of zero degrees, which gives me zero. And that makes sense, right? If you apply a force like this, the only thing that this force does is it tends to stretch the object, right? A component of the force that's parallel doesn't actually try to make the object rotate at all. Okay, so that one there doesn't produce a torque. So what are we left with? We're left with the torque due to the perpendicular component. That's going to be three multiplied by the magnitude is F sine of 30 multiplied by sine of the angle theta. What's the angle theta now for this case? Well, I've got that force going up and I've got the vector r going to the right. So in this case, you should convince yourself that you get sine of 90 degrees. So again, all we're left with at the end is 3 times 20 times sine of 30. That's exactly the same equation I had for method 1. So I know at the end of the day, this gives me 30, 30 newton meters. So method two is actually pretty nice. Method two says the torque due to any force is simply the distance to the pivot and actually F sine theta, F sine theta is by definition, it's the perpendicular component only of a force that tends to give it some torque. The parallel component we never care about. So it's the same equation, I'm simply grouping I'm putting a bracket around F sine theta. And that's another method to calculate the torque. You can break down any force that you have into two components and simply look at the perpendicular components of those forces. And be careful though, it's always the perpendicular component with respect to the that vector R. All right, method three is probably um, a little bit harder than the other two, I think. So method two, remember what happens when we put a bracket around uh, the F and the sine theta, but what happens now if I'm looking at the torque? And let's look at that equation a little bit. Let's bring the F at the front, and what happens if I group these terms together, R sine theta? Usually what they do, at least in most of the textbooks, is you define this line of action of the force. So it's a line that simply runs along the length and it just extends the vector. Right? They call this the line of action. So, now if I look at this term r sine theta, well here's r. Actually, here's the angle theta, but it's a little bit easier if you actually do it over here. This is also the angle theta, 30 degrees. And now if you look at r sine theta, now it becomes very, very clear. Okay, if this is the hypotenuse, this distance over here, if I close out that triangle and I form a 90 degrees, this distance right here between the pivot and the line of action of the force, this here is R sine theta. So R sine theta is actually the closest distance from the pivot to the line of action of the force. So if you know this distance, you automatically can calculate right away what the torque is. It's simply using the full magnitude of the force, in this case it would be 20 newtons, and the distance, or the closest distance from the pivot to the line of action, in this case it's three times sine of 30. Now this is simply 1.5 meters. So at the end now the torque you can simply write as 20 multiplied by that closest distance which is 1.5 which I'll write as 3 over 2 and now you see you're gonna get the exact same answer as before. You're gonna get 30 newton meters and that's the magnitude of the torque. Again to look at the direction you simply have to look at each individual force and figure out which direction it tends to make it rotate, counterclockwise or clockwise. All right, there you have it, folks. That's three different methods to calculate the torque. Uh, 
Hope it cleared things up for you. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, never hesitate to try to contact me. I'll get back to you, I promise.